In an earlier video, I talked about top-down analysis and how we are using interviews to talk to customers and to make sure we understand how access is granted. But what if we had the opportunity to look at the customer data themselves and to see if what they told us in the top-down analysis makes much more sense? Stay tuned. I'm going to talk to you more about bottom-up analysis and how we can use customer data to make sure that we have the right roles and the access that is being granted is accurate. Stay tuned. Hey folks, it's Andrew here at All Things I Am. In my video on the top down analysis where we were trying to create roles, we use different exercises. We talk to customers, we talk to system matter experts or SMEs as we call them, and we ask them questions about how are their new hires being granted access today. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above you here so you can watch that video and then come back to, to this one. So now that we have access to customer data, what do we do? So one of the first things that we do is we ask the customer, hey, do you have a ERD diagram or what is called as an entity relationship diagram? And this is a database diagram that talks about the relationship between tables within the, the database. ERD diagrams shows relationships between people, objects, and concepts. And I am not a database expert, but I've seen a fair amount of ERD diagrams in my day. So if this is something that you are gonna be tackling, I suggest you work with a database administrator or one of your engineers that kind of understands databases. And there are very common databases that customers use today. Some of the common databases that I've seen are relationship databases. And sometimes you might get the NoSQL databases, but the common ones are your oracles, right? That does relationship databases. When you get access to the ERD diagram, I like to take a look at the diagram and see what I can understand from the story. Again, ERD diagrams talk about the relationship between people's objects and concepts. So I'm looking at maybe one pathway and saying, okay, if the customer told me that I provision a user and there's an application I get, what are those tables that are being used to create that access today? I'm gonna show my screen now, and what I wanna do is walk you through a typical way of how to look at ERD diagrams. And again, I'm not a database expert. I've seen a lot of these over my time. So if you wanna work with somebody, again, use a database, a database engineer or a database administrator who can walk you through the process. And at times, also, what you would like to do is really work with the customer, right? Those are the people who have created those diagrams, so they should be able to kind of answer your questions and whenever you ask a question about, hey, what does it actually really mean? They can give you that answer. So let's, let's look at the screen right now. So on my screen right here, what you have is you have a just example of a online banking model. So when you look at the diagram here, what you'll notice is it looks very, very foreign to some people. I totally understand that. And what you need to understand is these are com common things that you'll see today. And this is why you want to work with somebody who, if you're unaware or you're just not familiar with how to read this, those are the people that help you out. And I'm going to link in the description below a couple of great reference points you can log to, and they talk in depth about what these, what, what, what does this little object means? What this little dash here means? What a PK, which is a private, which is, excuse me, not private, which is a primary key and FK, which is a foreign key, what those things mean. So, I'm gonna give you a little bit, a bit of background about what those two objects means. So a primary key is a unique attribute that cannot be duplicated. It can be a column, it can be a row within a database and it's unique to the certain individual. So for example, looking at our example here, we have an online banking model. So if I'm the customer, Andrew here, I'm gonna have a unique customer ID associated to myself. There should be no other customer ID assigned to anybody else besides myself. Now, the foreign key or FK you see here, the customer type code here, what this really means is these are the linkage between tables. So typically what this customer type code is, is it is it could be it could be a primary key on a different table that links the two together. So if we look at how this works, so we have a customer type code, and that can be anything, whatever the organization here has, your customer ID, which is unique to only myself and then maybe the type code. 
And let's follow just a quick example of following this. So when we come down here, you'll notice these little dashes here and the little dots to that little circle and little, looks like three prongs here. So the little dashes, let me make sure I check my notes really quickly. So um, when you look at the dashes, it's usually one, okay? So one customer, which is that little dash, comes down to this little O here. Let me make this a little bigger just to show everybody. This little O here is something that's called optional. And this is many. So what you want to read here is a customer can have one, two, three, or even no accounts at all tied to that individual. And in the accounts table here, we have an account ID, an account type code, and a customer ID. So you notice here that I talked about foreign keys and public keys. Not public keys, sorry. <laughs> I'm used to some, some of this. I apologize. Uh, private keys. You'll notice that the, the foreign key for accounts is customer ID, but the primary key for customers is customer ID. So when I talk about that linkage between a primary key and foreign key, you need those to kind of make those linkage together. So if I was to make a story out of this and understand the customer saying, okay, how do you give access to somebody? What we can look at to say is this, let's say the customer type code is let's say a demographic between 18 and 30 you have, that's a type of customer you have. So when I come in, I create my account and I get a unique identifier that says I am who I am. And again, they're unique. So they can't be duplicated. And also one more thing too, uh, primary keys cannot have null values. They have to have a value today. And so if you see something where that that's a problem, it would usually be a conflict and you'll, you'll get some, I think it's a reference integrity error. Uh, but again, database engineers, if you're watching these videos, you know, make sure you comment below, make sure that I'm saying that right. Um, Cause I'm not an expert, but things I've learned over my career. So going back to here, we have that customer set of 18 to 30, and that's a type of customer code that they have, which again, foreign key right here, primary key right here. So the linkage is created here. So, Account ID, account type code, and customer ID. So I have a certain account ID. So again, I get one, two, three, or no accounts at all. But let's just say I have two accounts assigned to me. The customer, the account type code, maybe this is a certain account that maybe only certain customers within 1830 can, can be allowed to open. I'm not sure that's really true. And it's just for example's sake. But when you look at the way you provision in terms of RBAC, you might just say, okay, here's how would I would derive the story. So looking at my EAD diagram and what I've been told by customers, maybe it could be when I onboard or when I have a new customer create their account, if their, their attributes are between 18 and 30, then maybe I will only allow these certain specific accounts to be open. And that could be a rule right there, right? Or it would open up for them to create those, create those accounts. Now, if it's something to shift, so let's say you have the demographics of 31 through 50, maybe they'll get the original account and maybe additional other accounts. So when you look at BOP analysis and you talk to your customers from the top down analysis, what you're doing is you're going, okay, can I validate that, right? And maybe what I can look at is to look at the data itself to make sure that what they're saying is correct and build that story in there. So one of the things I wanna talk about for BOP analysis, when you look at the screen here is you, you can notice a couple things. Number one, this can be very time consuming. So if you're a single person doing this, and to be honest with you, I've been in that situation where I had to review an ERD diagram by myself as the lead business analyst and also the IM analyst on the project, it took me some time to really understand this. And I would do a lot of back and forth with the customer to make sure what I am seeing in the data makes sense on their side. Also, one more thing in terms of a struggle when you do BOP analysis is sometimes you might not get a SME. There are multiple times where I've worked with customers who they don't even know how the diagram really works. It's been passed around from somebody to somebody to somebody to somebody that every time that happens, whatever the original understanding of the database schema is, it gets lost in translation. So that's another struggle that you might see today is when you use BOP analysis, you might not have somebody who knows exactly what's going on. And what can happen sometimes is when you look at the data and you're asking them questions, they might not know the answer to that. So I've told in my channel a lot that you don't need to code to be successful in IAM. 
However, if you are the only analyst doing this effort for BOP analysis, I highly suggest you understand SQL as a language because the databases that most customers use today are relational databases, for example, Oracle, which is common throughout a lot of customers. And you're going to have to take this ERD diagram right here. You have to build and join tables together to make sure the story fits what they've been told earlier. So it's, it's not too difficult, but again, you can be very specific on what you want to combine tables on. And if you just know the basic gist of SQL, it will help you out. Cause if you do not, then you're going to have to probably rely on somebody else. And if their time is limited, that could delay your, your results to a customer. And depending on the urgency or the time frame of your project, it could be a big hit. So, I'm again stressing out that you don't need to code, but if you are going to have to learn something to help you with this, and especially if you're the only person doing bump analysis, SQL is probably the best bet you're going to do. Now, one last thing. I know I talked about a little bit about NoSQL databases, and those are the times where you might have to have somebody help you out. But since those don't use, those, those are not relational databases, they don't use SQL. So I believe you can use like Anaconda, for example, that is Python and a couple of other different types of languages where I am not stressing again that you have to learn how to code, but you probably have to reach out to somebody to kind of help you with that because these those databases don't use SQL at all. So in summary, that's really briefly about bump up bump analysis and how you can look at the actual data itself to make sure whatever the customer has told you is accurate. And even if you don't have the opportunity to do top down analysis, at least using bump analysis, you get to see the data. And I'm always going to say this today is data never lies unless you make it lie. So a lot of times when you do your results and you find the information based on, let's say an ERD diagram, the customers can have to answer some questions to you. And the better they give you the answers, the more you are painting the right picture to say, hey, this makes sense in terms of maybe what roles we need to create based on what is being provisioned or given to a user today. Also, remember the challenges I talked about earlier where sometimes it's time consuming. You might have to, might have to do some SQL coding to join tables. And again, you might have to not have a SME that doesn't really fully understand everything or they can't answer your question. And that could be a challenge all in itself. So just remember that when you do bump analysis is that you gotta make sure that you have the right people, they understand everything, that you yourself might have learned how to do SQL code or if not, find somebody who can help you out. And then the third part again is just, just to make sure that it's within the, your time frame. So in the next video, I'm gonna talk about combining those two together, kinda like Voltron and using what we call a hybrid approach. And if you have not still seen my video on top-down analysis, I am gonna link it after this video right here, and you can look at that now and watch that, and then come back to this one too again. So that's BOP analysis in a nutshell. And if you have any comments or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you wanna learn more, hey, subscribe. It's all good if you don't. I'm just here to help you, you know, get to I am, understand the different ways of doing our back and to help you be successful in your career. So thank you so much for your time. I look forward to talking to you again. In the meantime, as always, stay curious because you never know. See ya.